What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I'm the Malt Activist, and today we have with us a rather interesting little dram. I'm talking about the Big Pete. Now, this is no ordinary Big Pete. This is a 2011 Christmas edition served at Cosk Strength. But. Here's a big warm welcome to our first time viewers. Thank you for clicking through onto that thumbnail. If whiskey is your thing and the sight of a middle-aged man telling you everything you want to know about whiskey is your cup of tea, or should I say dram of single malt whiskey, then this channel is the one for you. Please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, none of the above, all of the above. I leave it up to you. I'm just glad that you're here. That's all I care about. To my returning viewers, thank you so much for believing in me. And finally, to my Patreon gang and my YouTube members. Oof, without you, ah, we would be nowhere. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get on to the whiskey. I'm sure you already know by now that all my videos are timestamped, so if you wanna click through ahead to the tasting or whatever it is you wanna go in the video, you know you can do that. You're technologically advanced. You're a, you're a superior race of human being because you drink whiskey and watch this channel. So, you know, I left that just for you. Yeah, so just timestamp your way through this video any way you like, because there's a little bit of story I need to tell, you know? So it all started a few days ago when my friend, one of my best friends in the whole world and ooh, equally obsessed with whiskey by the way uh, called me and he said yo I'm planning on throwing a big party for some friends and I need you there as my whiskey sommelier I was like wow that is a bit disrespectful but fine I will be there because you know free whiskey anyway so we get there a little early before all the guests are there and we're going through some of his whiskeys and we're like okay this is good let's serve this this is good let's serve this and then suddenly from the back and he dusted away the cobwebs and there was like a pile of dust on this bottle, he brought this one out and he said, hey, why don't, why don't we also have this Big Pete? And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, I guess we could. I'm not a huge fan of Big Pete because, you know, I've had a few which weren't stellar. So I was like, yeah, I guess we could. And then I saw it and then I saw the label and I'm like, oh, oh, this is, this is the Christmas edition. This is the 57.8% cost strength. Oh, and it has a bit of Port Ellen in it. So I'm like, you know what, even if it doesn't taste good, I think it'll make for a fun story because uh, the people that we were inviting were like not snobs like us. They just enjoyed their whiskey. So maybe something like this would be interesting for them. So we're like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. Anyway, now towards the latter part of the evening, we open up this big peat and we serve a few glasses and I drink it and I'm like, oh my God, what is this? This is the greatest whiskey I've ever had in my life. I'm like, this, this can't be true. So I had another whiskey. I had another Big Pete. I had another, I had another dram from this bottle. And I'm like, holy crap. This is the greatest whiskey I've ever had in my life. And I was like, this is unbelievable. I have to do a review. This is crazy. My mind was blown. I was like, let's do this, right? Fast forward to the next day. I called my friend up. I said, listen, send me that bottle of Big Pete. Uh, I need to do a review real quick. The world needs to know how unbelievably gorgeous this whiskey is, right? Anyway, so I get the bottle, I set up this camera as you're looking at right now, but I said, you know what, let me, let me have a few uh, moments with it before I do the review, just to sort of revive uh, my memory and uh, remember why this whiskey is the greatest whiskey I've ever had in my life. And when I poured myself a glass, I took a sip and I said, hmm, well, it's not that great. Hmm. Does this whiskey taste different when I'm sober? Apparently that's the case because when I had this whiskey at my friend's house, I was I was about eight, eight to 10 whiskeys deep already. Uh, I was uh, feasting on a very expensive sushi uh, and uh, telling jokes. I'd already smoked two cigars by that time. And so when, when this glass came in my hand, I was, how should we say this? Mm, gloriously, gloriously smashed. And when I had it, I said, oh, this is the greatest whiskey I've ever had in my life. This is amazing. And everyone around me was like, yeah, bro, you're right. This is the greatest whiskey. Anyway, sorry. So yes, that's what I sound like when I'm drunk. Uh, and I was like, I have to do a review of this whiskey because it's the greatest whiskey. And then the next day, I was, all I could remember was, oh my God, I had, the, I had the best whiskey I've ever had. But now when I had it sober, I'm like, mmm. 
So this is what happens. This is what happens when you when you imbibe way beyond your capacity. Uh, your judgment is impaired completely because while this is a good dram, it is definitely not the greatest whiskey I've ever had. However, however, this is a, a fun little thing I want to also share with you is when I got this bottle, you know what? Let's pour a glass while we're, let's pour a glass while we're having a chat. There you go. Why are we not focusing properly? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so I just want to have a, I want to have a sip. So while, while um, I'm prepping for this video, I'm going over the bottle and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is no ordinary Big Pete. Hmm. This is a 2011 bottling of the Big Pete. And then I look back at the label and I'm like, oh, this is from an online retailer that closed down like six years ago. And if it's a two, which I, from where I used to buy a lot. And I'm like, oh, if this is a 2011 bottle, that means you've had it on your shelf for more than 10 years. So this is actually, uh, wow. I want to say an 11 year old bottle. Um, after being bottled, by the way, uh, that he decided to bring out and drink. And he had no clue that this, what, I mean, what this whiskey was. I think he just bought it on a whim. I, I don't remember. But he had it in his bar. And now we were like, dude. You bought this whiskey like 11 years ago. Are you kidding me? And now this particular bottle uh, in retail is worth 300 pounds roughly. And when I told him that, he said, oh, shit, I wish you had told me I wouldn't have splashed it around like um, like water like we did the other day. But hey, uh, he's a big hearted guy. He's a generous guy. He said, nah, it's OK. It's just it's just whiskey in it. It's just whiskey. Anyway, so. What do we know? What do we know about this whiskey? Uh, it is a vatted malt from Douglas Lang. Uh, I think you already know that. It has whiskeys from Ardbeg, Kalela, Bomor, <laughs> and Port Ellen. Uh, it is bottled at 57.8% ABV. It is non-chill filtered and it is natural color. So um, yes, uh, uh, we like the way this whiskey has been made. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Very, very light though, I have to say. Extremely light in color. <sighs> Which makes me think the following. Number one, um, maybe second fill uh, ex bourbon oak, mostly. Uh, I'm going to say very young, smells young-ish. Um, in terms of the recipe, it's not out there, the literature is not there, but you know, if I was to hazard a guess, I'd say lots of Bomor uh, and Kalela. Maybe maybe Bomor and Kalela in sort of equal uh, equal parts uh, with a dash of art bag and a, pssst, and a little pssst, misty spray of Port Ellen. And I think all the whiskeys in here uh, are probably around seven, six to seven to eight years old. I don't think anything more than that. Um, Though I don't know how old the Port Ellen is. Uh, I don't know if there are any six, seven year old Port Ellens lying around uh, that they could have used. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, so obviously the Port Ellen would have been uh, much older than this. But you know what? I think we can completely ignore the fact that this, that this bottle has any Port Ellen in it because I promise you, they just, you know, they just, uh, they just took this bottle around the Port Ellen cask and and, and then just let it, let it grab a little bit of its essence and brought it back. So there's, I mean, don't think, don't be like, oh, if I want to drink Port Ellen, maybe I can, no, don't. That is not what this whiskey promises you. However, however, what this whiskey does promise you is, in my opinion, fairly quintessential Isla flavors, okay? Even though it might be a bit young, it might be slightly chunky, um, but there is this unmistakable bouquet of uh, aromas and flavors that encompasses, you know, that truly reflects what Isla whiskeys are all about, right? And uh, especially those good, good Kalilas, especially those nice bourbon, bourbon matured uh, Bomors, and definitely some young odd bags and Kilhomans. Imagine if you made an amalgamation of all these whiskeys, you would get the big peat. And again, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of big peat. I feel like the whiskeys are, uh, uh, again, just too young, uh, too brash, 
um, just you know uh, uh, way too phenolic for my liking uh, not I, I don't think I don't think the cuts are really that good um, and you know it, it just feels a bit raw and I don't like my whiskeys that way however there's a certain element of um, uh, boyish charm youngish charm if you like sort of boyish is the wrong word but sort of young charm that you would find in um uh, in in a good whiskey and i think this particular big beat the 2011 christmas edition uh kind of delivers on that you know and uh, so yeah so i have i have nothing but good things to say about this i think it came out as a very very pleasant surprise uh, at a party where when we weren't expecting it uh, granted we were um, we were sufficiently inebriated uh, to maybe uh, you know maybe shower way too many accolades on this than it really really deserved but you know what that's what a whiskey should do you know what I'm saying even if you wake up the next day and you think oh well it wasn't that great was it in that moment it really lifted everyone's spirits and we were all like whoa this is amazing we love it granted we were drunk we were we were on cigars we had already eaten a lot of sushi and we were having a great time and this whiskey came there and then when we drank it it, it elevated our our mood and i think that's really really important i think and that is in my opinion the the real the real reason whiskey exists right is to elevate your mood uh, and the way you're feeling and more importantly if you're with a bunch of friends it uh, it adds that little extra spark to the party and if a whiskey can do that you know what I don't care if the whole world hates it I'm going to love that whiskey and which is why I think this whiskey is absolutely fantastic and since every single whiskey is you know um, uh, uh, someone's personal opinion on whether they like it or not right uh, this is mine because I will forever remember this as the time that a, a big peat came out and surprised everybody added that little spark uh, uh, to our party and all of our whiskey enthusiast friends were like dude this is amazing this is great and so you know what for that reason this is a great whiskey Now look, I know this whiskey is not available now, uh, the 2011 version. However, they've been apparently producing it every year. I saw a 2022 Christmas edition, which is served also at Castrang. Same distilleries, by the way, uh, Bomor, Kalila, Ardbeg, and Port Ellen. And dude, incredible value at about 50 odd pounds, you know, which I think is not bad at all, you know, uh, considering that you have these uh, four whiskeys in it. Again, ignore the Port Ellen, but you know what I mean. And I think for 50 pounds, it delivers a very decent tasting experience. <sighs> My friend would have bought this at about 50 odd pounds 10 years ago as well, I guess. Maybe less, maybe in his 30s or 40s. Um, but you know, now it's worth like 270, 300 pounds. So interesting anyway so he's like whatever um but yeah uh, so you know the 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 cast 2022 christmas edition is roughly 50 odd pounds which i think is good value for money there's nothing wrong with it so um yeah i, I i'm not a huge fan of the um of the 46 percent i tried it uh, though there are many people who prefer the 46 over the cast strength uh, i think i'm the other way around i prefer the cast strength over the 46 but hey that's me or, or for, for all I know, I was completely sober when I had the 46% version and I need to be sufficiently drunk to try it again and maybe I like this better. So, who knows. Anyway, let's get on with the tasting. I get peat, pineapple, vanilla, smoked ham, oysters, sea salt, and that touch of smoke. Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with this nose. You know, you can't go wrong with... Um, Good, good old-fashioned Isle of Flavors uh, in, a, in a bourbon barrel. I think that's where they belong. And I think this is just kind of quintessential, if you ask me. <sighs> Again, on the palate, uh, quite peppery. Lemon, lime, pineapple, uh, smoke, iodine, uh, that woody oak, and of course that ash and peat right at the end. The only, the only thing I would say is that it's probably not complex enough for it to get really top marked and I think that's because of the age uh, definitely some young whiskies in here um, definitely some brash whiskies also in here which you know 
if if handled correctly, I think uh, add to the uh, overall personality of the whiskey. But here, I think they gave it a bit of a rough edge. Uh, uh, but you know what? That kind of makes it exciting as far as I'm concerned. So. Hey man, like I said, um, this is a perfectly, perfectly enjoyable whiskey. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I love the fact that it surprised me um, and maybe sit up and take notice. Uh, and I think that's that's uh, that's what a whiskey is supposed to do. And you know, full marks, full marks to this whiskey for that. Um, and I'm going to give it in terms of a rating. I'll give it a very, uh, I'll give it a very generous 7.5 B plus. Okay, because. It, it kind of ticks all the boxes, you know, it's high strength, it's got typical Isla flavors, I love that it's an ex-bourbon barrel, uh, that's that's just down, you know, my um, my uh, my flavor alley. Um, I like the fact that it came out as a surprise when, when we were drinking it, uh, and, I, uh, and I love the fact that uh, everyone around me liked it, and it elevated the party, and there were a lot of raised eyebrows, and they're like, whoa, this is really, really good, uh, and that's a good thing in my opinion. So, yes. So, I'm very, very happy with this whiskey. Uh, of course, I don't think it's available anymore, frankly. Uh, obviously, the 2011 version I'm talking about. Uh, if it is, I guess, if you want to if you wanna be 300 pounds lighter, go ahead, try it. But I think you will still get that same level of experience, even if you get the 2022 version, which is available for like 50 odd pounds. So, why not? Um, yeah, there it is. There you have it, man. This is this is what I think of the uh, 2011 Big Pete Christmas edition served at Cast Strength with a little pss, pss, misty spray of Port Ellen in there, along with uh, Artbeck, Kalela, and Bowmore. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, the reason I, I like this whiskey is because it reminds me of, uh, of a fun moment I had with a bunch of friends drinking whiskey, and that's what whiskey is all about. So yes, I won't preach anymore. Uh, I sound like a pastor now, uh, a whiskey pastor, if you ask me. So yes, there you go. So thank you. Thank you for joining me for this uh, whiskey review. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.